Hi, my name's Butch, and at the age of 30, I thought I had everything. Beautiful wife, two beautiful children, had a perfect job, but many addictions that I had along with that. And one day, my life completely changed. By the time I was 26 years old, I had reached my goals. I had two college degrees. I had married my high school sweetheart. I had a home in the suburbs. I landed a great job uh, at Eastman Kodak Company in Rochester, New York. And all the things that I thought would make me happy, I possessed. And yet there was still a void inside. I had the money, I had the vehicles, we had a vacation place, um, boats and cars and entertainment, and yet there was something missing. Hi, my name is Dan Gwaszewski with the Matthew 2535 Foundation. I grew up in the suburb of Tonawanda, outside of Buffalo, New York, with my mom and dad, my two older brothers, in a very dysfunctional alcoholic home. Every night, screaming and fighting. My dad would come home drunk every night about five o'clock, slamming cupboards, and then eventually slamming one of us. My mom going to bed crying early at night. My older brother sometimes with fist fights in the living room with my dad. As a young boy, I was very fearful going to bed at night, barely sleeping, worried that my dad might kill my mom or kill my older brother. I did very poorly in school and I would get in trouble for my parents. By the time I was 12 years old, I was getting in trouble in school for other things. I had already started drinking, experimenting with marijuana and other drugs, leading a promiscuous life and uh, getting in a lot of trouble in school now for just causing trouble. At the age of 16, I uh, joined a fraternity at our high school, and at 17, one day, my best friend and I got drunk one day and went down and joined the Coast Guard. The funny thing was, we didn't even know what the Coast Guard was before we left that day. I came home, told my parents I joined the Coast Guard, I'm going away, and they said, good, what do we care? From the age of 17 to 28, I drank every night, most nights getting terribly drunk, out of control drunk, just wild, crazy, not remembering what I did that night. And yet, ironically, every Sunday I would go to church. As a boy, we went to church with my mom and uh, my two older brothers. And by the time I was in my mid-20s, I was still going to church regularly. Uh, I would even leave church in the middle of the service to get my football bets in and then come back and finish the service. Although I drank every night and was gambling most nights, I had a lot of success in my life. At 18, I was a drill instructor in boot camp. By the age of 21, I was graduated to uh, Petty Officer Third Class and was an officer a day on a small search and rescue base in Rochester, New York. At 23, I moved to California and shortly after was running a gaming room, a legal gambling room in Sacramento, California. And then I moved back home and at 25 years old, opened up a bar, Heroes, on Main Street in Williamsville with my best friend. Like most things, I opened a bar, I never even knew how to bartend. I had to learn on the go. At 28 years old, I had what most young men and most of my friends wanted was just a non-stop party life, friends, money, girlfriends. But what my friends didn't know is I was very empty inside. Uh, I had everything then, but I was missing out on something. I didn't know what at that time, and a friend of mine just came to me, invited me to church, and. You know, I was Catholic, raised, and I wanted to go, but, you know, I had nothing wrong with it. I believed in God and just kept dissing my friend, you know, and he basically kept coming back. And one day, after maybe like the 10th try, I said, you know what, you got my word. I'm going to show up. I go in my house. I tell my wife, two kids at this time, and I said, hon, we're going to church. And she was like, oh, really? I was like, what's it going to hurt? You know, we believe in God. We're going to go to church. and. Basically, I hate saying this, but it was more or less, get them off our back. Next thing you know, we wake up Sunday morning, we go to church, something I'd never experienced before. You know, start out with hymns, I'm looking at my family, the joy. We knew nothing. 
only that God existed. And next thing you know, it was wonderful. Long story short, I wanted to go back, I wanted to go back. Next thing you know, two months later, I go in and they said, uh, what are you waiting for? I said, man, I just got, I just got to take care of some sin, you know, and, and I wanted to get saved and I wanted that Christian life. And they were like, man, God, you're not going to change nothing without the Lord Jesus Christ. I said, man, I'm ready. Well, in my life, um, uh, was filled with uncertainties in my upbringing as far as, uh, my home was a wreck and I was in foster homes and and not having a father and a mother of my own, uh, you know, always being in someone else's home and just never really felt a part as, of, of, a, of, a, of a family unit. And so at age 15, I went off on my own and got involved in drinking and fighting and just all kinds of stuff. I was a, kind of an angry young man and not really seeing any purpose in life or what the use of my life would be for society or anything of that nature. And so, um, I guess um, throughout my teen years, I worked, I was always a worker, made money, I had friends because I'd throw parties and things like that. So, I, you know, I had, uh, I thought I had, you know, close friends and went on in my life with uh, still this misery within myself of what is the purpose of my life? Where's, where's the focus? Where am I going? And I just never could figure that out. Where I would go to bed night drunk and say, God, please change my life. And that second voice would say, don't change my life. Until one night, I can't explain it. I, I laid there drunk in my bed like every other night and said, Lord, please change my life. And there was no second voice. And then I passed out. That next day I went into work into my bar and I didn't drink. I didn't gamble. A couple days later, I told my best friend, I don't know how to explain this, but I think God delivered me overnight of alcoholism. He was a good friend and uh, he agreed with me and, and what we did was we put the bar up for sale and three months later I sold my bar and walked away forever. Here I was 28 years old, barely passed high school, one semester of college and I had no idea what I was going to do with my life. At the age of, of 23 years old, I, I was hitchhiking down the road and a man stopped and picked me up and I got in the car and, and he, started, he, he takes off and he says to me, um, I don't pick up hitchhikers, but the Lord told me to pick you up. And uh, take in mind now, I believed that there was a God, but I had never heard anything about Jesus Christ. And if I did, it certainly didn't click in my mind or, or mean anything to me. And so here this man, Jack, picks me up and he tells me the Lord uh, told him to, to pick me up, which meant nothing to me also. He didn't mention the name Jesus, it was Lord. Well, who is Lord? And so I, I went 50 miles down the road with Jack. And uh, Jack was a preacher. He had just gotten out of the hospital with a triple bypass surgery. And uh, while he was in there, a gang of kids had gone into his church and had, had demolished a lot of the walls and different things and, and uh, defaced the inside of it. Well, in that 50 miles, Jack, struck up a little bargain with me that he would help me if I would help him. Over the next four years, I just existed with this battle going on. What's going on? I wasn't drinking anymore. I was still gambling. Not sure what God was doing in my life until one day at 32 years old, I walked into a Christian church and heard the gospel for the first time. You know, I thought God was angry with me and really hated me because of all the wicked things I'd done. But I heard for the first time that while I was yet a sinner, Christ died for me. And that was good news. That was the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And at the end of that service, when that pastor said, hey, who wants to come forward and accept Christ and change your life? I jumped. I jumped at the chance and went forward. I go back. My wife's like, where are you going? I said, I'm going to get saved. She goes, not without me, you ain't. She was waiting for me. So we go back. and. I knelt down and I just gave my, my life to Jesus Christ. I repented of my sins, asked Him to save me. And uh, wow, I knew something happened, but I couldn't really figure it out. I go home, big 70-inch seven, screen TV, pool table, Pittsburgh Steelers is on. And I remember coming down the stairs with my suit on and I went around the banister and I said, yo, and everybody was just partying. and. They were like, they were like, what? And I was like, I just got saved. And they're like, 
yeah. I'm like, no, 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 no. You don't understand. I said, I just got saved. And then they start looking at each other and they were like, yeah. And I was like, I'll be down. I go upstairs, I get my Pittsburgh uh, jersey on. I come downstairs, me and my wife are just sitting there hand in hand, smiling from ear to ear and just waiting graciously for them to leave. At the same time, we just couldn't stop smiling. Well, from that day forward, my life's never been the same. I've been living for Jesus Christ. I'm not perfect by any means, but boy, it is good to walk with Jesus and I finally have purpose. It was just a blessing. I received Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. He filled that void and took away all the hopelessness, the shame, the guilt, any pain that I had. I won't tell you that life isn't hard and it doesn't have its trials and its tribulations, but I know that the Lord God, He sees and He cares about everything that we do, and He's always there um, just to be with us and to help us through every trial. So I just want to tell you and encourage you to trust Jesus Christ. He died, he was buried, and on the third day he rose again for your sins and for mine. And all you need to do is call upon him with a sincere heart, and he will save your life, and you will have a home in heaven, and you'll have a father on this earth, a heavenly father, that will care about everything that you do. I cursed his name. I did everything that was against him, and he was long-suffering. And I can look back in my life, and I can see where he spared my life many times. He kept me from certain things that I had every opportunity to, to get into. Some of the drugs that I could have gotten into, some of the relationships I could have gotten into, some of the wrecks that I did get into and should have died. I had a police officer, he said he had to make a decision one night to shoot me or not shoot me. You know, and, and God changed his heart, he didn't shoot me. I mean, there's many times where I could have, should have been in the grave and in hell, but God spared my life to a moment such as being before Jack and he preached the gospel and I received Jesus Christ my Savior. So if you do have something in your heart where you don't have any purpose in life, you can't see beyond that grave, and you're miserable in your life, why don't you look to Jesus Christ? I just know from seeing it, without God coming into my life at 32 years old, I know I would have never stayed married. Um, prior to accepting Christ in my life, I never lasted in a relationship for more than a year. Always something new, always chaos, always problems. When I became a Christian, my life completely changed. I was able to, as I became devoted to God, I was able to be devoted to my wife. Um, everything in my life, everything, I believe is a gift from God. I mean, I have seven children. My children are all doing fantastic. Uh, my relationship with my wife after 20 years is 28 years is great. Uh, although I barely passed high school and I had no trade, nowhere to go, I started a real estate business and God just made that grow. Uh, really, anything good in my life I attribute to my relationship with God and only by the grace of God I believe that uh, the successes that I've had, I, I really attribute to God in my life. Almost everything that I do seems to go better now as a Christian. I lived 32 years, uh, I guess you call it, out in the world and had some successes, but a lot of heartache and a lot of chaos and a lot of trouble. And uh, since I've become a Christian, I can't think of two bad days in the world. Things go wrong, but I can put my faith and trust in God and he sees me through. When I was younger, um, my family went through a lot of turmoil, and because of that, I had to I had to lean on Jesus Christ. So I learned at a young age to read my Bible and go to God in prayer um, when things got difficult, and I, I definitely had a lot more peace. Um, other people that I know who went through similar situations um, turned to drugs and alcohol and I could see the results of that and the, the destruction that it did to them and just the trap that that was and I'm not saying that everything was super easy um, but the Lord gave me peace through the very difficult times and um, it taught me as I got older and um, our, my, as my children went through some difficult times with health issues and stuff I still was able to just I knew who to go to I knew it was Jesus Christ that was the only place that I could find comfort and strength 
and peace. My first Christian picnic I was invited to, I was not a Christian, it was an Eastman Kodak company, a guy trying to evangelize or something, invited him to a picnic. And I said to him, can I bring a six pack of beer? And he said, I don't know about that, I'll ask my preacher. He came back the next day and said, no beer. I said, no beer, no me. How can you have a picnic without beer? That's what I thought. Been drinking from an early age and just in the hippie thing in the 70s. One day a guy invited me to church and I went to church and I heard the gospel for the first time, November 18th, 1979. Accepted Christ and uh, the Bible, the Word of God. It's all that really matters and I'm just loving it and I've loved it every day since that time. So uh, there's a big difference between a picnic where everyone's saved, you're enjoying just the fellowship of and the blessings of God versus needing a stimulator drugs or alcohol and all that sort of thing. So I'm just blessed and I'm very, very grateful. I grew up playing sports and when I got into my 20s it didn't seem like we could play any kind of game without having a case of beer on the field and that. But you know when I became a Christian really all that stuff didn't matter to me anymore. I enjoy playing you know with uh, my friends from church. I'm playing now with my son. Uh, good friends, good fellowship and we like to play hard but it's not really that big of a deal whether we win or lose. It's just enjoying the fellowship uh, with other Christians and other people out there. And uh, God is really good. I've been able to trade a lot of the nonsense that I used to have in my life for just really good things. And uh, God's really enriched my life. My name's Joe Camilleri. I'm the pastor of the church here. And um, I'd like to leave you with a great message that changed my life, changed the lives of literally thousands of my friends and millions of people around the world for ages. Um, man is born with an inherent problem uh, and it's called sin and the result of sin is death. Uh, science has made great strides in easing our pain and extending our lives but still since the beginning of humankind for everyone that's born one dies. We all face that someday. Um, the problem is the inherent sin in us, not necessarily something exactly that we've done wrong, but just the sin nature causes us eventually to die. There is a solution for death though, and his name is Jesus Christ. He came into this world 2,000 years ago, uh, the only begotten Son of the Father. He lived a perfect, sinless life, a life that we could never live. The Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And at the end of his uh, life, his perfect sinless life, uh, men took him and put him on a cross and crucified him, killed him. He was called the Lamb of God, which takes away the sin of the world. And the Bible is clear in its teaching that whosoever would believe in the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, three days after he was put in a grave, after his cruel crucifixion, he rose again. The Bible says he's seated at the right hand of the Father and he would receive all that would come to God through him. All that would acknowledge, yes, that they are sinners. Yes, that they deserve eternal punishment, not in the presence of God, but that Jesus Christ's blood is the Lamb of God was God's requirement for the total atonement for every sin in the individual past, present, and future. And when that middle wall of sin comes down between a human being and their creator, that's the peace of God which passes all understanding. Peace with God, no longer to be judged at the final judgment, but rather to be received of the Father. As many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even them that believe on his name. I pray that even right now, you might bow your head and heart before God, ask Jesus Christ to forgive your sins, every sin. Believe in his total atonement, and he will save your soul. Thank you for taking the time to listen. God bless you. Hey, after you've watched this video, if you have more questions, if you just want to contact me, Please, please do so. We'll put that on the screen for you. I would love to answer any of your questions. How you could come close or just draw near to a God that loves you and is looking to have a relationship with you. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you.